Hello everyone, Julia here, hello from Sweden and welcome to a new video, another travel journal video. I just came back from a little weekend trip to my favorite city in Sweden, uh, Gothenburg, and I took with me my passport size travel journal again, same as to the Netherlands. It also was a rather a short trip four days, uh, so I took this little journal with me and uh, already started to document this trip a little bit, so I will show you what I already did during my trip and a bit at home and also uh, some things that I bought during this trip. Uh, I didn't do uh, much of stationery shopping this time, I just bought a few uh, postcards that I want to send to some friends and I think this one maybe I will keep for myself and will put it on the wall. I really liked uh, these illustrations, very pretty, so I bought a few postcards and also in the same shop a few stickers that I already added to my journal. I will show it to you in a moment and I also went to my favorite antique shop there. I always go there and always find some new interesting vintage ephemera papers, postcards and this time I found a few really nice vintage postcards and I think almost all of them are uh, written on the back, uh, not every single one but almost all of them and I really like when uh, there is some writing on the back of the postcard. Also, always looks great to see all these um, old messages um, and yeah, some of them are uh, touristic postcards from some cities in Sweden, also some are with some people and yeah, this is for example from Landskrona, uh, a city in Sweden. Also there are some American postcards. This is for example Lincoln, Lincoln Park in Chicago and this one isn't written on the back. Also one from Finland. Yeah, I really like vintage postcards and I always uh, get some if I have a chance and usually in Sweden it's possible to find this kind of postcards in some antique shops and sometimes some second-hand shops and this shop in Gothenburg I think so far is one of the best ones in Sweden than uh, where I've been to when it comes to some vintage pieces like this. So I go there every time when I have a chance and always find there something interesting and I usually scan all this vintage finds uh, and most of them are available on my Patreon for download uh, as digitals, printables that you can just print at home yourself. And I think this I also will add some time to my Patreon, maybe next month. Um, yeah, so that's all what I bought when it comes to some new stationery. And now I want to continue with my little journal. I took out the insert from the cover. I had this um, uh, little journal with me and uh, same as to the Netherlands. I took just a few small things with me, some papers for background, this little insert uh, sticker, release paper insert with some stickers and a few small things, some PET tapes with girls and that's what I'm going to use for this journal for decorating the pages and I started this insert in the beginning of the year and I already have here a few pages and uh, this is about some short trip in January and this is already Gothenburg and I think it will, will be an insert mainly for my trips in Sweden. I have decorated this insert inside cover here and have this Sweden sticker here so I think I will use this for my 
Swedish uh, short trips and it definitely it won't be enough until uh, end of the year but uh, I think I still can fit a few more trips here. So this is what I already did, some kind of cover spread for, for this trip to Gothenburg and this I did still at home before the trip and I already started to add some papers and ephemera and printed the photos but I just started with adding this and I uh, decorated some of the pages uh, still uh, during my trip basically just added uh, some small papers and tapes and stuff like that uh, kind of like a background and uh, when I came back I printed all the photos already and cut them and uh, for now I just put them in between the pages where I want to add them um, yeah so this is all uh, what I did so far and now I just want to continue with it I want to add all the photos that I printed first and then also add more stickers from this uh, insert and maybe more of this girls tapes that I always like to add but yeah I think first I just will finish was uh, adding all this stuff that I have in between the pages. I also took my um, mini printer, like pocket size printer, uh, to this trip because I thought maybe I can print at least a few photos uh, already during the trip, but I ran out of paper. I printed exactly one photo. This one, this was the one that I still added um, during my trip and then I ran out of, of paper in the printer somehow. I didn't really check how much of the paper I have and I thought that uh, there is more but it turned out that uh, there was only one sheet uh, of this st sticker paper, photo paper left and I couldn't print more photos. So basically I just left some space for them and yeah, this is for example from that antique shop where I bought uh, postcards and some pieces of packaging that I also want to add. So I added all the photos that I printed and decorated the pages with some of the stickers. I still want to add a few more things uh, here and there. So I think now I just will go through this little uh, sticker insert and we'll see what else I would like to add. And yeah, um, all the photos are already here and the main part I think is already kind of done. So now I still will add some small decorations to the pages and then only journaling part will be left. Um, yeah, so I definitely want to add some of these dot stickers as always and also I want to see 
what I have in this uh, sticker insert and add a few more stickers uh, to my pages kind of to finish the decorating part at least the, the main part I always go through my journal in the end when everything is done already when journaling is done as well and just uh, check if I still want to add anything else usually it's just some tiny tiny details here and there but but yeah I think for now I just will add a few dot stickers here and there Maybe a few of those tiny birds. And also, meanwhile, we'll tell you a bit about some of my favorite places in Gothenburg because I've already been to this city quite a few times and I already have some favorite places, places where I always go when I'm there and also every time I discover something new. Uh, so this city somehow became really, really special for me. Uh, first time I went there in 2022, I think, in autumn. And since then I go there pretty much every season I guess. Last year I've been there in summer and in spring and in autumn and also in winter so I think yeah really last year I've been there um, every season and I always like to come back there because uh, somehow it always feels like coming home uh, even if it's not really my home but it always feels like like I'm coming back home, so... So yeah, I think uh, one of my favorite parts of the city is uh, Haga. Uh, that's what you can see here on the on these pictures. And I think it's probably one of the most touristic parts in Gothenburg because everyone goes there uh, all uh, all tourists go there and it's kind of it can be a little bit crowded sometimes depending on the season and day of the week but still it's a really nice part of the city I like to go there and walk through the streets and there is this uh, kind of like a main shopping street there it's not really a shopping street but there are many many interesting shops there are many cool cafes and some art galleries and stuff like that and also antique shops, second-hand shops. Uh, so it's really nice to walk this street and see uh, what's there but also as soon as you go a little bit uh, away from it like one, on one of the side streets it's not that crowded anymore and it's really nice and cozy and I really like all this um, buildings there, the architecture. Uh, it's really, really nice and cozy. So I definitely would recommend you to go there, especially if you're first time in Gothenburg. And um, a few of my favorite shops are located there. One of them being this uh, tea shop, which is called Tea in Haga. It's a really tiny, tiny uh, shop with many different kinds of tea and coffee and also you can buy there some things related to tea and coffee like different cups and stuff like that. Basically everything tea, coffee related and uh, the shop is really really small and often you can't enter it right away if there are like I don't know two people inside the shop then it's already too full and you have to wait <laughs> to enter the shop uh, but it's really nice it's uh, super friendly you always can ask for help like to pick some something for you and the choice of tea and coffee is really good there so if you are into tea and coffee or tea tea or coffee uh, you definitely should 
visit this shop. It's a very, very cool place. Um, you also can buy there some small gifts, postcards and some small souvenirs. Um, yeah, it's super nice and the only thing that it's just so tiny that sometimes you can't just enter it right away and um, have to wait if you want to uh, check it out. There's also another shop where I always go. It's also located in Haga on the street and that's this antique shop uh, where I bought these postcards. I always find there something interesting and also the shop itself is really nice. It's beautiful. They have many interesting things and also always uh, when the weather is good uh, they also have a few tables outside the shop with different things. So like for example this picture that's a table outside of the shop but also there are many cool things inside the shop, so if you are into anything antique, vintage, you can definitely uh, find something interesting for you there. They have their variety of things for for home, like the different home decor, books, postcards and a lot of stuff. So that's another place where I always go uh, when I'm in Gothenburg. Um, and in general, in this part of the city, in Haga, there are many cute, cozy shops. So I think you can definitely find something interesting there. This time I went to this um, little souvenir shop. I think it was called uh, Haga of Sweden or something like that, or Haga of Gothenburg. And they have there a lot of Moomin stuff. So if you are into Moomin characters, then uh, you can definitely find there something interesting for you. They have there many Moomin themed things, uh, different stuff for for your home with Moomin, for kitchen, like I don't know, cups, uh, mugs, whatever, and also some clothes and socks and toys. And, uh, also you can buy there some postcards and some little souvenirs from Gothenburg from Sweden. It's it's like a souvenir shop. So there are not only women themed things but also uh, some other things. Uh, another thing that I always like to do is uh, to check out small craft breweries in Gothenburg because there are plenty of them. There are like hundreds of uh, this tiny craft breweries there, um, beer culture uh, there is really great and like in general in Sweden but uh, Gothenburg is one of the regions where it's really really big and if you are into interesting kinds of beer, craft beer, some special kinds of beer that you don't get everywhere then you definitely should check out some breweries in Gothenburg area. Uh, there are really many and this time we went to a brewery called Popels because it was right next to our hotel and I already knew this brewery, I tried a few beers and they have many, many, many interesting kinds there um, including alcohol-free beer. So if you like to try some interesting kinds of beer then you definitely should check out some of the breweries there and basically you can just pick any brewery and uh, almost 100% that it will be a good one. So far I haven't tried any bad kinds of beer from that area, like from, from the small breweries especially. And another place where I like to go, it's also one of those kind of spe special places, definitely not for everyone, but if you are an into metal music and into metal bars and all the all kinds of pl places related to to metal music then the abyss is the place that you definitely should win uh, visit in Gothenburg it's a metal bar uh, I think one of the oldest there and and Gothenburg is kind of a capital of melodic Swedish death metal uh, many many great bands come from from Gothenburg or from that area so the music culture metal music culture there is huge it's an important part of the city and there are many places related to 
to music, to metal music in particular, and the Abyss is one of those places. It's a really cool metal bar. So if you are into metal, you definitely should visit the Abyss. It's a very nice place. They have a very good food there. Very wide selection of different kinds of drinks, whatever you can imagine. And also atmosphere is always nice and friendly and you always meet there some people who are into the same kind of music as you, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, so the Abyss is also definitely one of my favorite places in Gothenburg. And in general, I also like really like to walk um, along the river. I think I already mentioned in some of my previous videos, like probably uh, in uh, the one about uh, my trip to Hamburg, that I really like uh, harbor cities, I like all these beautiful boats and ships, and just like to walk uh, somewhere uh, along the river or sea, and um, being next to water always is very relaxing for me, so Gothenburg is also a big harbor city, uh, so if you are into that as well, you definitely should walk uh, along the river and just enjoy the beautiful views. It's it's kind of industrial city, but um, there is some special kind of beauty in it, I think. And I really like that uh, harbor area there. So that's also something that I always do, just go for a walk somewhere in along the river, in the harbor area. There are many cool places there are located on the ships or boats, uh, so you can find there are different cafes and restaurants located along the river, on the boats, and also hotels, for example. This time we were staying in the hotel. Uh, on the old uh, ship and it was a really cool hotel, I really liked it. Uh, the only thing that it's located a little bit away from from the city center and there is not that many buses uh, that go there, so it's kind of a little bit of walking. If you stay somewhere in this area, so you would have to walk a bit to get to the city center, but but it's not really far, so it was it was okay, it was no problem uh, getting somewhere from there. And I really liked that area, so I'm glad that this time we stayed uh, there, in, in that area. It was really fun experience, and the hotel was very good, super friendly stuff, and in general just was just nice. And in general, I can definitely recommend you to walk in the city center. There are many beautiful streets, there are many, quite many interesting places, and it's not very big. It's like for, for Sweden, it's quite a big city, but in general, it's not very big, and in the center, everything is walking in walking distance you can easily go from one place to another and also public transport is really good there you can go by tram to many places and there are some of these cool old trams that you can take uh, which is also a really fun and nice experience and there are also many cool places to eat there like for example this time we went into some soup a specialized cafe. They have a few kinds of soup every day and you can pick which one you want. It's like a lunch menu soup plus salad plus something else and you can try there those soups and uh, choose the one that you like the most and actually you also can take two kinds like half of the plate of one kind of soup and then also half of the plate of another one if you want something uh, different. Um, yeah, it was a, a really nice place. This was the first time that we've been there and I really liked it, so I think I definitely would like to go there again sometime. 
and another place where I always go that's this uh, bookshop it's fantasy themed bookshop and it's an English book bookshop most of the books there are in English which is great this is also the place where I always always go when I'm in Wolfenburg and um, there are also these shops in Malmö and in Stockholm so like there are three of them in Sweden and I've been to all of them and I think the one in Gothenburg is my favorite actually because there was a very cool cafe inside this bookshop called Cafe Sirius and it was just an awesome place. I loved to go there to that cafe. The atmosphere there was great. You could just take a book with you from the shop and sit down and read there or play some board games there and food and drinks were just awesome but unfortunately this time I found out that the cafe is closed now they couldn't afford to keep it there anymore because um, they made some loss with it and unfortunately they couldn't keep it there so the cafe is closed now it was permanently closed I think in the end of December and I was really sad to find out about that because this cafe definitely was one of my favorite places in Gothenburg. I went there uh, for the first time when I first time came to Gothenburg and since then I went there every single time and I really loved it but yeah well it was very sad to to find out that it doesn't exist anymore but the shop itself is still there and it's still great. Uh, if you're into fantasy then it's definitely a place to visit because the choice of books there is really really huge and there are also board games and some merchandise. Nice and cozy place, always very nice atmosphere there, very helpful staff uh, who works there. So the bookshop itself is really great. Uh, yeah, and if you are into fantasy, then you definitely should visit it. Okay, I think I'm almost done with decorating my pages. I'm slowly reaching the end. That's already the last day of this little week weekend trip. Okay, I think now I'm done with decorating all my pages and now only journaling part is left. So now I will journal about this little weekend trip and then in the end we'll show you the final look of all these pages and yeah so now before pen they look like this and as always maybe in the end I still will go through all the pages and add a few tiny tiny details here and there but I think mainly I'm done with with the decorating part so I just finished journaling about this trip and now all my pages are ready and I didn't add anything else. I just will leave it as it is. I really like how it turned out so I won't add anything else and here is the flip through of all the pages that I made about this trip and I have to say that I really like this uh, smaller format as well. I still prefer uh, regular traveler's notebook size for most of my trips but this small passport size works really well as well and it's growing on me more and more. I started to do this uh, last year and before that I didn't use passport size for uh, documenting my trips as a travel journal because I thought that it's just too small for me especially because I print really many photos and like to include many ephemera and decorate my pages uh, very much but uh, it works it, as it turned out it works really well and I really like 
the smaller format as well and I like that it's usually very fast and easy to finish these pages. It's definitely way faster than to work in bigger format of course. Yeah, so I will continue to use this insert uh, later this year, probably for some other short trips in Sweden and also will continue to use Passport Size Traveler's Notebook as my travel journal. I really like it, it's very fun, so I can recommend you to try it if you never tried Passport Size before as a travel journal and think that it's too small, just give it a try and see how it works. Maybe try first to use it for very short trips, like maybe one day trip or two days or something like that and see how it goes. That's how I started with this. I used uh, last year, I used this uh, passport size traveler's notebook only for short trips, like for one day trips in Sweden mainly, like and then at some point also started to use uh, to use it for longer trips. So yeah, I definitely can recommend to try it out. I hope this video was interesting for you as always. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next videos. Bye!